So the big focus in chapter 12 is all about circles, and in the first section, 12.1, we're just going to restrict that a bit to just look at tangent lines. So lines that touch a circle only one point, that's what we call tangents. So this would be an example. If I have line AB here, it looks like it touches a circle, intersects only right at point B. Doesn't touch before, doesn't touch after, just that single point. So we'd call that a tangent line to a circle. And that leads us to our first definition. A tangent to a circle is a line in the plane of the circle that intersects the circle in exactly one point. And that point where the circle and the tangent do intersect, we call that the point of tangency. So in this case, point B here looks like your point of tangency. We could also describe parts of that tangent line itself. So uh, ray BA, for example, would be a tangent ray. And segment BA could just be a tangent segment. So I could either use the entire line. I could use one direction if I want to make a, a ray and keep on going forever. Or I could just look at the segment between A and B and just use that segment instead. When I look at a tangent line of a circle and also a radius, so radius a, of a circle and the tangent that intersects the endpoint of the radius, they're going to have a special relationship in those circles. We're going to see that in the next uh, theorem here. If a line is tangent to a circle, then the line is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So if I was to draw that out and describe it, if I have this line here AB, which is a tangent line to the circle because it touches once at P, if I take a radius from that point, so going from the center out to point P, those two should be perpendicular. So the radius, again, OP, would be perpendicular to that tangent line AB. And we're going to use that for some practice problems too. So example like number one, uh, ML and MN are tangent to the circle at O, or sorry, tangent to circle O. Uh, what's the value of X? So it looks like uh, ML is tangent at L, MN is tangent at N, and we want to use that to find a missing uh, degree measure. And really the only thing we need to use our new theorem for is just to say that these are right angles. And we know they're right angles because I have a tangent line and the matching radius. So since those are perpendicular, I have a right angle at the top. I have a right angle at the bottom for the same reason. And we're also given 117 degrees for the other angle. So if I want to find what x is, all I have to do is remember that for a four-sided figure, our angles shall all add up to 360. So if I add 117, a right angle for the top, right angle for the bottom, and our missing measure, that should make 360 for the whole figure. And if I take 360 and subtract the other three angles, that should leave us, I think, with 63 degrees for x. And same type of question is next, just dealing this time with a triangle. So ED is a tangent line to circle O, and it's tangent at point D. We want to find the value of x again. So uh, here it looks like we're given a 38 degree uh, measure for the triangle, and we're not given one at point D. But if I just remember that a radius and a tangent line are perpendicular, I know that's another right angle, and we're going to use that to find our last angle. So same type of rule. Uh, if I add the other two angles that I'm given, 38 and 90, and if I add the one that I want to find, this time it's not going to make 360. It should make 180 because I'm looking at a triangle. So if I take uh, 180 and subtract the other two angles that I have, uh, 90 and 38, that should leave me with 52 degrees for x. So I can also do this with a little bit more complex problems, but using the same concept. Uh, CN Tower in Toronto, Canada has an observation deck 447 meters above ground level. About how far is it from the observation deck, and this should read, uh, to the horizon. And in order to use that, we have to get the radius of the Earth, which we can estimate as about 6,400 kilometers. So if I'm going to set that problem up, it looks like they have it set up for you. Um, the CN Tower would be this part, which is obviously not to scale if this is the Earth, because this would be way too big. Uh, but that's just so we can see it. 447 meters, we can round to about 0.45 kilometers. So this would be your tower. And what we've got to find here is this distance from the top of the tower, so from the observa uh, observation deck, and going down to the horizon that we could see. So this would be the distance I have labeled x here. And we're also using the radius twice in this figure. If I know that uh, the radius of the Earth is about 6,400 kilometers, that's going to be a radius going up forming a line with a tower. And it's also going to be a radius if I go to my point of tangency. So if I'm using that to make a triangle, I can find x by using Pythagorean theorem. x is one leg of that triangle, which I have labeled on this triangle here. We have the radius of the Earth that meets that point of tangency, so this would be 6,400. And we also have the radius of the Earth plus that little bit extra for the tower, so that would be 6,400.45 uh, for that hypotenuse length. And if I want to solve for x, this is just going to be Pythagorean theorem again, so that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
And if I solve for x, again, that would take uh, this part squared on the right, subtract 6400 squared, and if I end up square rooting it, we should come out to about 76 kilometers for that. So setting that up just involves using Pythagorean theorem, and we use the same measure for the radius twice. So next theorem is kind of talking about the opposite, so pretty much a converse of what we've already seen. The line in the uh, plane of the circle is perpendicular to a radius at its uh, endpoint on the circle. Then the line is tangent to that circle. So uh, what that's talking about is just the opposite. Last time we said that if we know we have a tangent line, then we know it's perpendicular. Here we're just saying if we know that we have a perpendicular, then I know that that would be a tangent line. So again, this is like an example of a converse. If AB and OP are perpendicular at point P, then that means AB is tangent to the circle. And we can use that again in some other problems, although uh, problem three is kind of using what we did up at the top of the page. Uh, if I want to find the radius of circle C, it's got a few parts labeled here, but first of all, we know these would be, uh, sorry, we know AB would be a tangent line because I do have a perpendicular line there. And if I want to use that to find the radius, I'm using uh, Pythagorean theorem, kind of like what we used up above. But this time, we don't know what the radius is when last time we did know that and we could plug that in. So if I'm trying to solve this using Pythagorean theorem, just the fact that it's tangent means I have a right angle. So if I'm trying to use my a squared, b squared, and c squared, I can use 12 as a leg and x as a leg. So 12 squared and x squared put together should be equal to the hypotenuse squared. You gotta be careful for the hypotenuse. It's not gonna be eight times x. It's gonna be eight plus x or x plus eight because we're just adding uh, this entire segment together. So if I take x plus eight, again, that's my hypotenuse and we're gonna be squaring that for Pythagorean theorem. And if I simplify this, on the left-hand side, I just get x squared plus 144. On the right side, if I want to simplify this hypotenuse, I just have to remember that we're foiling. And you could write that out if that helps, if we can expand it as x plus 8 and x plus 8. That's another way to write x plus 8 quantity squared. If I foil that or use table method, any other method we use from algebra, um, that should eventually simplify to x squared plus 16x plus 64. So from here, I'm just looking to solve for x. First thing I can do is cancel out my x squareds. If I subtract both, I'm left with 144 equals 16 plus 60, or sorry, 16x plus 64. Then if I take away 64 from both sides, and it looks like divide by 16 to follow my algebra steps, should end up getting 5 for an answer for x, so 5 would end up being our radius. Same type of question next for practice. Uh, if I set up Pythagorean theorem, that should be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what I have in my formula, x squared plus 10 squared equals, again, that hypotenuse, is going to be x plus 6, and we got to square that whole thing. So just like the last question, I want to make sure that we could expand that right-hand side and simplify it. So x plus 6 quantity squared would be x squared plus 12x plus 36. And if I follow my same steps to solve for x, again, take away x squared, take away 36, divide by 12, uh, x should come out to be about 5 and a third, or we can just round that to 5.3. So that would be my radius to the nearest tenth. And if I want to try another type of question with the same concept, uh, ML is asking, is that, tan uh, is that line tangent to circle N? So it's asking us basically, do we have a right angle there? And the only thing we have to do is use Pythagorean theorem again and just test and make sure that that does work in Pythagorean theorem. If I do 7 squared plus 24 squared, if it's equal to 25 squared, that would be a Pythagorean triple, so it would be tangent to the circle. And if I do test that, if I want to check and see if they're equal, the left-hand side, 7 squared plus 24 squared, that makes 625. And the right-hand side, that hypotenuse squared, that also makes 625. So since a squared plus b squared does equal c squared, I'm just left with uh, that as a right triangle. And since it is a right triangle, I know that that will be tangent to the circle because those two lines are perpendicular. Since I have nl and ml as perpendicular lines, ML is tangent to the circle at point L. Also, our next theorem is talking about something a little different. Is two tangent segments to a circle share a common endpoint outside the circle? Those two segments are going to end up being congruent. So this would be an example of how that would be drawn out. If I have a point outside the circle, so this point at B, where two tangent segments meet, so AB would be a tangent segment and uh, BC would be a tangent segment, then I know uh, based on that theorem that those two segments would be congruent. The length of AB should be the same as the length of BC. And there's also a few other uh, vocab that we've seen before, but it's going to come back into this section. In the figure below, the sides of the triangle are tangent to the circle, and that means that the circle is going to end up inscribed in the triangle. So when you see inscribed, 
That just means that that is a circle drawn within your figure. And if you just want to say it uh, kind of the other way around, you could say the triangle is circumscribed about that circle. So it's drawn around that circle, circumscribed, and we could also just say the circle is inscribed inside the triangle. So using that to solve a couple questions, circle O is inscribed in uh, triangle ABC, and we should just use that to find the perimeter of that triangle ABC. So we're just using that theorem from up above. If I know that AD and AF are both tangent to the circle, then 10 centimeters for the top will be the same as 10 centimeters for AF. Same thing, if I'm given uh, 8 as a length for FC, then 8 will also be the length of EC. And if 15 is the length of DB, then 15 will also be the length of EB. So if I want to find the perimeter, I'm really just adding those all together. And the way I added them is in pairs. So if I have two 8s, I do 2 times 8. I also have two 10s, and I also have two 15s. So if I end up adding all those sides together, I should get 66 for a perimeter. And same type of question next, although our known values change. So this time we start by knowing the perimeter, and we want to use that to find the missing length. So kind of like the last question, just the other way around. And we're going to use the similar theorem. If I know that PX has a length of 15, I know that PZ will also use a length of 15, because those are both tangent from the same point. And same thing here, ZR is 17, so RY will also be 17. So there's a few numbers we can fill in first. We can fill in this 15 and this 17. But we don't know anything about these two segments yet, so let's just call those x's that we have to find. Because if I do find x, that's going to be the length of qy, which is what we're looking for. So the way I'm going to set that up, this time I do know the perimeter, so that's not something we're trying to find. This is just what I can add them all up to. And we know that 88 should be the perimeter when I add all those pieces together. So you could list them out all with addition, but again, I just group those as pairs. I have two 15s, I have two 17s, and I also have two lengths that we're trying to find, so that would be 2x. So if I simplify that out, eventually I think we should get 24 equals that 2x measurement. And if I divide, uh, divide that in half, I know that x, that length that we're looking for, that would just end up being 12 centimeters. So if I plug that back in, 12 plus 12 plus 17 and 17 and 15 and 15, if I add all those up, that should also get me 88 for that perimeter that we were supposed to have. So make sure you have these complete and also try those practice questions before you come into class.